Thank you, Mark. Just a few comments before we get some questions answered here. Hope everybody's had a, a great week so far. Practice has gone well. Um, I, I did think about, I'm not sure which one asked the question, but uh, talking about our, our tight end success and, and why um, Tim Brewster is a great friend of mine and, and he's one of the best tight end coaches in the country, but it didn't seem to be that our tight ends were part of the offense the first year. And I know Tim got frustrated with that. Uh, I don't know if it was because we had two great running backs and Daz and, and Deami at receiver. Um, so we were just using those guys so much or, or that our, our tight ends just weren't part of the plan to start with. But uh, I do think we're doing much better in the red zone uh, with, with touchdowns because of our tight ends. And that's made it a huge difference. It, it's uh, we're running the ball more down there where we've got more play action to tight ends, just like the, uh, the opening fourth down play to um, um, Kamari on, on the first drive. Uh, so I, I do think that um, coach Lilly and coach Longo getting on the same page and the addition of our talented tight ends, but more than that, the role that they have right now, I think they caught nine balls Saturday uh, has really, really helped this offense. And when people criticize uh, this type offense for not being able to score when you get in the lower red zone, uh, that was a problem for us. Uh, and, and so far this year, we've done much, much better. So uh, I feel like that, uh, that that's a credit to uh, probably Phil listening more and John Lilly bringing some new ideas in and we've got talented tight ends to, to answer that question better than last week. Uh, the other thing is that right now our, our staff is working so well together uh, offensively. They can make adjustments quicker there uh, because you've got, as we've said, Larry Porter's run this offense with Jack Bicknell. Jack Bicknell's run this offense with Phil Longo. Lonnie Galloway's run this offense since he left Appalachian State, so it's all he's done. Um, and John Lilly's the new guy, and and the reason I bragged on him so much, give him credit. He had never run anything like this on offense. And when I hired him, he said that he said, "Coach, I'm I got a learning curve here because this is not what I'm used to." Uh, but but he has done a, a tremendous job uh, of adjusting and fitting in with the other coaches. Uh, the second thing was that uh, we we were asked about Jaquarius Conley on Monday. He has practiced this week. He is practicing mostly with the show team, which shows the Miami uh, defense uh, against our offense. Uh, after yesterday's practice, and then again, I just talked to him a few minutes ago. I said, have you got any soreness? And he said, no. Uh, he seemed to be getting his confidence back. He didn't hit, obviously, but he, but he ran routes. And he did run into somebody in Pascal yesterday, and he did do some live Pascal without tackling and got knocked down and jumped right back up. So... Uh, I don't know if it's next week or or after the open week of practice, uh, but it looks like he will be starting to work back into the lineup. He will not travel or play this weekend. Um, and the last thing uh, before I talk a little bit about Miami is that uh, road games are tougher. We talked about it last year. We didn't win one. Uh, this year, we're, we're uh, have a 20-point lead with Appalachian State, 11 minutes left, and nearly blow the game. Uh, this year, we got a 21-3 lead at Georgia State, turning the ball over three times in the second half and, and nearly blow the game and then miss a fourth and two. Uh, so much, much more difficult on the road because momentum can change so easily. And, and that's, uh, uh, that'll be a, a huge test for us this weekend as, as we head to Miami. I didn't realize, depending on whether you, you look at the games that were um, forfeited or, or not, right now the the record seems to be um, 12 and 11. Uh, so this has been a really, really close series uh, that Carolina leads by just a little bit. Um, Mario Cristobal was one of the, the hot young coaches in the country. Everybody was after him. And um, he went back home to Miami where he played. Um, and and he's uh, he played on national championship teams there. He's been a head coach twice already. Uh, and he, he it brings a, a, a lot of hype and uh, a lot of credibility uh, back to that program. Um, 
He, he worked with Saban at Alabama. He worked with Butch Davis uh, and then was a great player uh, at Miami. Uh, he also hired uh, a staff that's got as much experience as anybody in the country. And all these guys know how to win. So uh, we're sitting here a little bit like we were with Notre Dame. They're a very, very talented team that's coming off of a game that they didn't, they, they weren't very pleased with. Uh, and unlike Notre Dame, they've had two weeks to prepare for us. So uh, we'll get their best shot. We, we will not get um, a, a lack of effort with this group. Uh, they're tied for the ACC lead in red zone defense, uh, very much like uh, Virginia Tech was last week. They're ranked 11th in run defense, giving up only 87 yards a game. They're ranked 33rd nationally in scoring defense. They're giving up 20 points a game. So they, they've played great defense so far. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, their quarterback, was the ACC Rookie of the Year last year. He kind of got his, his coming out party against us in the second half. He, he ripped us and ran up and down the field and gave them a chance to win the game. Um, and, and they've always got the big linemen and, and the great backs. Last year, uh, Knighton, uh, number four, if our fans remember, we couldn't tackle him. Uh, and they've also got a transfer in Henry Parrish from, from Ole Miss. Um, and they've got a lot of different options in the, the passing game. They've always got speed. Uh, their punter, um, Lou Headley, is averaging 46 yards a punt. And that's second in the ACC. And Borgallis, their, their great field goal kicker we tried to recruit. Uh, he's hit seven out of nine of, of his field goal attempts. So uh, it'll be a fun challenge. We'll have our hands full. Um, our practice has been good this week. I would hope that our defense started it over. Uh, from a statistical standpoint with the uh, ACC season, they felt good about what they did last week and, and they've got a huge challenge this week, but they could come into this game with more confidence and our offense is still trying to, to figure out the running game. Questions. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey coach, what is different about uh, Miami's offensive approach with this staff as opposed to last year? Anytime you've got this many new coaches, Andrew, coming together, uh, there's always different pieces of philosophy. And, and uh, Coach Gaddis uh, took Michigan last year to the playoffs. So it was a Jim Harbaugh pro style, uh, very physical, um, balanced play action, uh, very, very good offense. Um, and I'm sure after the Rhett Lashley offense from last year, which was uh, uh, up-tempo, um, probably a lot like we are offense. Uh, they're trying to figure out what they want to do and at the same time uh, figure out what their players can do best. And that's something that, that we had to do here. We just talked about it. It took us a while to get our tight ends involved uh, in our offense. And um, with different coaches, you've got different attitudes. So. Uh, I would think that the the open date came for them at a perfect time because they can look at those first four ball games and say, okay, we like this here. Maybe this worked at Michigan. This isn't as good here for us. Here's what uh, quarterback does best. Um, so we'll have to start over and, and see what they came up with, uh, with their self-evaluation after the first four weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Luciano, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thanks for your time, and I hope we're doing well. Uh, kind of a follow-up on that. Miami's rushing offense hasn't looked very good outside of the Texas A&M game, game, whose run defense has proven to be very vulnerable. How much can you take away from that game, and what are you expecting out of Miami's offense on Saturday? Uh, Luciano, the thing that you, you look at when you look at our defense, we haven't stopped the run well. And we did last week, but that's only one time all, all year. We, I guess Florida A&M didn't try to run it, but they had 21 yards. But uh, the people, the, the App State, the Georgia State, the Notre Dame, we had trouble stopping the run. So I, I think that uh, Miami is going to look at that uh, like Notre Dame did and say they're going to have to stop the run before we start doing anything else. Um, and and they're, they're, they're talented, they're big, and they're strong. Uh, uh, so I think you'll see them try to run the ball Saturday. And it's going to be 83 degrees, but with the humidity, it's going to feel like 88. And here we were is 48 this morning when, when we came out for practice. So 
uh, our guys are going to have to handle the heat. We're going we're going to have to uh, also uh, substitute more um, than, than we would on a normal weekend. Uh, let's go over to Adam Smith. Sorry, just trying to type in Max humidity comment there. Um, didn't want to lose that one. Uh, Mac, I'm a weatherman. What, weathermen can – no, I'm not a weatherman. Weathermen can be 33% right and keep their jobs. Coaches cannot. I don't know what it says about me, but I love it when you do the weather thing. Even in the preseason when you were telling us about the turf at Georgia State or whatever, I was like, all right, that's pretty cool, Mac. Um, well, it, it doesn't matter till you get down there and you got a whole bunch of cramps and you weren't prepared for it, and then it matters. Then you're asking me why we had so many cramps. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you prepared. Okay, I'll have Ross ask you about it on Saturday. Um, or Ross will. Uh, well, I just wanted to ask you about. Let, let's if, hope that let's hope that after the game, that's what Ross is asking me about. Okay, all right. It we'll is, check it's, it's been a good game. If Ross said, "Boy, it was hot." <laughs> he may be in a Hawaiian shirt. I've heard there's rumors about that. Uh, I've I've we'll check back on that. Um, I wanted to ask you. I, I don't know if dealing with success is the you know, the right way to phrase it. But, I mean, you're obviously coming off your most complete game against Virginia Tech and having responded from a frustrating day against Notre Dame. Like, is is that, I don't know, dealing with success, sustaining success, uh, not getting too fat and happy off of one game, is that part of just your message this week? Like, what are you trying to to say and do to keep your foot on the gas here? Adam, it's a great point. Last year we we didn't handle success well. And we were awful. I mean, I, I'd come out of the Virginia game offensively and thinking we got this thing, man. We're finally back on track and go to Georgia Tech and absolutely stink and have three turnovers in the first half. So that's why we started our, our message early in the spring was practice and play to a standard of excellence every day, regardless of the score, regardless of the opponent. Uh, and, and Miami is a national brand. That, that they're very, very talented. So like Notre Dame, they're going to get your team's attention. And that's why people play so well against them. Um, but I, I do feel like that in watching them practice this week, and I just told them, we haven't had a bad practice uh, since spring, since the first day of spring. They practiced hard every day uh, um, because people would think, but you're, you're not going to be flat against Miami. Uh, they're, they're just, uh, they look too good on video. They're, they're too talented. Uh, they've got, uh, those great coaches and, and this game has, has been a, a really, really tight game. Uh, um, the two of the last three years, it's, it's been down to the last play. Uh, so we, we expect that same type of game this weekend and uh, hopefully we're maturing enough now that we're not going to be an up and down team. We're, we're hopefully that that's cause the, if you are, you're not going to be very good. And we're seeing it a whole lot. I mean, it scares you. I, I sit and watch as many games as I can, and there's a lot of teams that are showing up, and and we constantly talk about it. But it's a, it's a, it's a fear for sure. Is is Caleb Love still your? I mean, Caleb Love. I'm sorry, <laughs> Caleb Hood still your starting running back uh, this week. I mean, you started in both halves, obviously against Virginia Tech. Is he still number one? I, I think so, Adam. It's still not very clear. We're still trying to figure it out because we haven't made enough yards. And the uh, two of the three big runs we had Saturday were options that were we didn't block anybody. Um, so we we've, we've got to be real honest and real clear. And we keep telling the backs if you're in there and you're making yards, you're going to stay. And if you're not, we got enough talent. We're we're going to rotate backs. But we'd we'd rather find two guys right now that can take over. And we still haven't uh, declared that. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it. Thank you. D.L. Brown, go ahead. Hey, Max. We've, we've certainly made a lot about uh, Drake keeping his feet on the ground when he runs. But uh, aside from that, he's second in attempts right now um, in rushing. And I was wondering just, you know, is that something that you see continued for, for Drake to, to continue to log a lot of uh, a lot of carries, whether it's scrambling or design runs? Or is that something you'd like to get away from if you can? Still, I'd rather not have many design runs for him. And, and if they are, I'd rather them be options where he can get down. 
Um, but I, I don't want him running into a bunch of people and, and, um, he's going to have a certain number of scrambles. There's, there's going to be a quarterback draw that's necessary to really help recruiting. Uh, but I, I do feel like that, uh, um, the fewer times he can have design runs, uh, the, the better off we are because we got to keep him healthy. And, and that's the other reason we got to have some running back step up and, and, and make some plays there. Um, and he saved, he, 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 he moves so well out of the pocket and he can throw on the run so well that he saved our offensive line. Some we've really, really bragged on them. And DJ Jones has stepped up and saved them. A couple other running backs have saved them, but Drake's also saved them. Now he's left a little bit too soon sometimes, but also there's been times that, that fourth and seven, the other day, he's got two people on him when he throws the ball up to Josh and, and completes it for a first down. So um, but, but no, we, we, we do not want him, uh, to be a runner last year. We didn't have any choice with, with Sam. Uh, we, we had a lot of design runs and that was part of the plan. Uh, this year we'd rather, um, Drake be a thrower, uh, and a, a scramble guy out of the pocket, maybe a quarterback draw every now and then he can run an option where he pitches it and gets down, but he's also just got to learn to take better care of himself. And Vince Young ran a lot but he never got hit because he would get down and he would get down fast. And, and that's what we've got to, uh, we've got to get Drake to do. And now with your sliding, they're not supposed to touch him. So quarterbacks can be really safe. If you're sliding, they have to pull off. Now we've had a couple where he's kind of been going in head first and it looked kind of like a slide and it was hard to tell they're going to let them hit him then. So it has to be a slide. But if you can perfect the slide, you're not going to get hit many times as a quarterback unless you're in the middle of, of uh, trying to make a first down um, with, with some tight yardage. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Let's go over to Michael Coe. Hey, Coach. So as Drake starts to get more national recognition for his start to the season, how do you make sure that you know, his head doesn't get in the clouds. He doesn't start to feel too cool about himself, as you like to say. Number one, his mom and his dad will be all over him because they they have, his, his dad was a, a national player. His brothers will be all over him because they've already won national championships. So he's, he's not going to be impressive to them. Uh, and Drake is very, very little-headed. He has gotten publicity his whole life. He was a five-star uh, he was very, very highly recruited. He went through the celebration of Alabama commitment. Uh, so I really don't think any of this even affects him. I, I never see anything different with his personality. Um, I, I don't see him any different right now than I did this time last year. He is, he is so even kill with what he does. And even on the field, he'll get mad at himself. You, you saw him, he overthrew a deep ball Saturday and he, He's beating his chest. I, I wanted to say, everybody saw it. Everybody knows it's your fault. So don't, you don't have to tell them. Uh, but he, that's who he is. He's going to put more pressure on himself and he's never going to be satisfied. So I, I, I don't see national recognition bothering him at all. And you said you try to try to watch as much football as, as you can. From, from your perspective, the Miami Middle Tennessee game, what went wrong for Miami in that game that, you don't anticipate going wrong for them this Saturday. Uh, the same thing I think that went wrong with uh, uh, ball uh, with uh, uh, Marshall and Notre Dame. Uh, it's a new staff. They they've had a lot of hype. They'd had a um, um, a huge game with Texas A and M. Um, they fought. It was tough in the end. And then you just don't have the the respect for the opponent when when Middle Tennessee comes. And you looked at Middle Tennessee, they had lost uh, James Madison 44 to seven. And uh, so it, it was really, really hard for a new staff with new guys, a lot of transfers, trying to get everybody back excited and on the same page, because there's absolutely no way that with your talent and with your coaches, you could think you could lose that game. And, and I think Marshall, I don't know what they've done now, but Marshall lost the two games after Notre Dame. So you, it's just, uh, it is so hard to get people's attention when you see something like that on the other team. That's why we've showed the, the, the players, the first two games and, and we've shown them a lot of the Texas A&M film 
like we showed them the Notre, the Ohio State Notre Dame film video because uh, they're not going to play us like they played Middle Tennessee. It's not there. There won't be anything even that resembles the way they played that game. And and right now, and it's it's just what Adam was talking about. We're seeing so many teams that aren't playing hard every week, and it's it's just scary. It's like a disease out there. And and we all seem shocked when we see one of these upsets. They're they're more the norm right now than the than the shock. Um, so I, I think that's that's what we've all got to understand. I I was sitting out there with a couple of coaches today and saying, you know what, they're they're practicing well. We have no idea who's going to show up Saturday. We don't know how they're going to play. And, and I've, I've I've had some Thursday practices where I walked out and said that's the best Thursday practice I've ever had, and they stink on Saturday. So that's why coaches look tired all the time and they're nervous and they're frustrated because you're dealing with a bunch of young people and you're just not really sure how they're going to play. And I did tell the guys at the end of practice, I, I love this team that we haven't played well at times, but we have played hard and they've really tried and they, they like each other and they had fun at practice today and they're excited about going to play Miami. Uh, and that's what this game should be about. It, it, it should be about, guys playing a game and having fun and liking each other and if you play your best and your the other team plays better give them credit and and move on to the next one but uh what you don't want to do is not play your best and and that's what i'm seeing happening in a lot of situations across the country thanks coach and, and michael i saw it on tv it really frustrated me that i said when i come back to coaching if i ever come back i want to make sure our guys play hard every week because you should do that. There's 12 games. And when fans say, how can they not be ready? There's 12 games. I agree. I, I totally agree. And that's why you have to take the opponent out of it. And you have to take the weather out of it. You have to take all the, all the components out of it, except you. How are you going to prepare and how are you going to play? This is one of your 12 because you can't predict what the other one's going to do. And it, it's just amazing to me that, that sometimes guys don't show up. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Oh, uh, back over to Luciano. Go ahead. Coach, uh, Power Eagles and Cedric Gray combined account for 30% of your team's solo tackles throughout the season. What are your thoughts on the season they are having and their impact on your defense? They're really, really good. Uh, and your linebackers should be your tacklers. Your, your front usually takes up the blocks and frees the linebackers to run and make the plays. Uh, that's why they actually were named that way because they back up the line. And, and if your safety is making all the tackles and your linebackers aren't, you're probably in trouble because they're at the next level. But uh, uh, both Power and, and Sed Gray are, are very talented. They both love to play. And as our, our coach just said after um, DeAndre Boykins was named uh, the player of the game last week, they said, you know, it could be Power and, and Cedric about every week but we're, we're not going to do that. We want to recognize some other players, uh, but you got to be great at linebacker. And, and those two guys are, they love to play. They're passionate. They practice the same way every day that they play. And, and, and it's fun to watch them. Thanks coach. All right, coach. That, that, that yeah, was our well, last and, question this morning. And Mark, the other thing is said only played a game, uh, a year and four games, five, what, uh, five games. And and powers only started just this year, so they're really really young too, Luciano. So that's the other thing. Thank you, Mark. See everybody. Thanks, Travel Coach. safe. Will, will we have some on Zoom after the game? And and yeah. well, what about the ones that aren't there though? Okay. If if you Jeremy says you can get it from your buddies, if you really want to do that, look at it. And, and see, because it seems unfair to you if you can't get there, um, not not to be in the press conference after the game if you want to be. So talk to Jeremy about that. It's not my business, but it, it seems more fair for you if you can't go to, to at least uh, be able to be in the mix. Thank you all.